Ramsey Solutions. It's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. George Campbell, Ramsey personality, host of the Fine Print on the Ramsey Networks, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life and your money. Open phones at 888-825-5225. The call is free, and some say the advice is worth exactly what you pay for it. You jump in, we'll talk. We're going to start with Matt this hour. Matt is in Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, Matt. How are you? Good, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve, sir. What's up in your world? Uh, not much. Um, I've got a question for you in regards to selling a house. Uh, me and my wife are in the process of selling that. We have about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in equity. Yay! And we are plan. Yes, and we are planning to move to my parents' house for about two to five years. Why? Uh, they are in the process of buying a house in Florida and not quite ready to sell their main uh property so they won't be there while you live there they will not but they're letting you live there for for free correct and then you're going to buy it later correct or or somewhere else we're not quite sure how that will work out so as part of the deal they're not making you buy this house eventually no we're not okay um it's, it's not forced by um but we want we want that equity of our house to continue to grow. Um, right now, my wife and I are still working through baby step two. Uh, we have about thirty thousand dollars left to pay off, um, and just trying to decide if we continue to use the equity in our house to pay off our our debts or put that money towards something that can continue to grow for us. Did I hear thirty five thousand dollars clears it, and you got two fifty? Correct. Okay, that's a no-brainer. Do that for sure. Then we still park the rest of it for the future house purchase, right? Correct. Okay, I got to go back to the deal because I'm struggling. Okay, I okay. want. I, I need a little bit of detail here. Um, so, mom and dad are moving out of their house, and you're going to move into it and live there free for three to five years. Correct. Where are mom and dad moving? They are moving to Florida. What are they going to live in? A rental? Uh, they, or are they buying? Or they're they're buying a house in Florida. Have, have well, actually have already bought it. Why are um, they not selling you this house now? Um, I I don't quite know. Uh, I I wouldn't want to buy this house. Um, we're just doing this, my wife and I, to help them a little bit through the process of uh, whether or not they want to move to Florida. Uh, for the foreseeable future, future, or if they want to move back to Georgia and and live in their house. How old are you? Uh, Thirty years old. A little old to be doing house sitting. Yeah, I agree. This is weird, especially for five years. Why I think they need. I think they need years? to pay or get off the ladder. Mm-hmm. If they're going to Florida, they need to sell their house, and you need to go buy a house. Yeah. Here, here's the problem. Here's the problem with your deal. Okay. It's a nice thing for them, and it sounds good because you're getting to live there for free, right? Right. But the problem is that in the next five years, houses will have gone up in value, and you will have been out of the market that whole time while you house sit for parents who are indecisive. Right. I don't think this is a good deal for you. Okay. I want you to be a homeowner. With I mean, and you got two hundred fifty thousand or two hundred and fifteen thousand after we paid off your debt. So if you right. don't want to buy this house, I would go buy a different house. But you sold your house for the sole purpose of doing this deal. Yes, and, and my wife and I do love the property. Um, if if Not the chances enough to arise, we, we probably would purchase there. I'm sorry, say again? We, my wife and I, it's a family property. We love the property. If if the opportunity arises and we can buy the, the house for my parents, I would I would do so. Wait, wait. I was just talking to a guy a minute ago who said he didn't want to buy this house. Where'd he go? Well, it's not for it's not for sale right now. We're, we we're, I'm not 100 percent sold on it that we would purchase this house if it was on the market. Uh, it's a, quite a bit out of our budget, um, but oh. you know the property is great. And uh, what's the great. property worth? 
Uh, probably a hundred. Uh, sorry, one point five million. Yeah, it is out of you. Well, I don't know. What do you make a year? What's your household income? Uh, we make uh, one twenty. Yeah, it's out of your budget. Okay. Right. What would they What would they sell it to you for? Would it be value? It, it would. Uh, they They bought it at a at an auction, and um, it's they got a great deal out of it. Um, if we were to buy it, it would have to be kind of a non interest uh, long term buyout of the home, which I'm not. Okay, here's sure I would here's get if you're into. going to go forward with this deal, here's the only way you don't get burnt. Um, I still think the deal's squirrely because it sounds so like indecisive, and you're getting in the middle of other people's being indecisive, and that's always a bad. That's like playing in the traffic. Okay, so um, the uh, but what I do want you to do is I want them to give you a written option to purchase on this property today, a right to buy, a set price that you makes you smile. Okay. And I want you to record that option at the courthouse as a lien on the title. Do this legally like this was done with strangers. Okay. Okay? And that's how you do business with family, too, by the way. Not because we think family's going to screw us, but because we half butt do stuff because we think they're not going to screw us, and then they do. So then you get all you do business right. Okay? But you need to lock in the price at today's values. And makes you smile. And if that's a million dollar purchase for a million and a half house, do that. Live there three or four years. At least then you're not. The, all the other properties around you in life are not going up in value, and you get you lose all of that appreciation in the next five years while you're a glorified house sitter. Right. So lock in. Can you do that? I I could do that. Yeah. That's yeah. otherwise you're burnt, man. You're burnt on. You're losing all the appreciation in the next five years. And then park your money in some mutual funds with a smart investor pro after you pay off your debts and have your emergency fund in place. Yeah. And but, even then, if he purchases it for a million, he might have to take out a mortgage for 700000 which may be way beyond. Might be, but it might not be. But if he's got an option for five years or a right to, you know, first right of If they're living there for free for five years, they can save up like crazy people yeah. while their other money grows. There we go. There we go. Yeah. So now you, now you take 120000 and you take what, 2000 2500 bucks a month that was your normal house payment or whatever, and you go bonkers and pile up cash. That's 30000 bucks a year plus growth, and you do that. That's another that's another 150000 200000 to put on this. Now that's we're starting to better. get there. Yeah. yeah. So you get a deal locked in, and you use this time to save like crazy. Then you get there, and you don't even have to do a mortgage with them. I wouldn't do a mortgage with them long term. I don't recommend that, even if it's 0%. But I would get a deeply discounted price from them, gladly, and lock that in in a formal option today. Don't do this deal if you don't, because you're going to get burnt here, man. This is going to leave you out of the market for five years, and that's not a good place to be. Real estate is not crashing during this five years. It's going up. This is The Ramsey Show. On baby step number one, eh? How'd you guess? With health care costs rising, learn how Christian Healthcare Ministries can help you make the most out of your budget. Visit chministries.org slash budget. Don't worry, it's worth it. George Camel, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host. If you haven't heard the news, the sky is not falling, the apocalypse is not here, and the housing market is not going to crash. I know this isn't what you're hearing from TikTok, where all the best economists hang out, but... <laughs> oh, that was funny. 
<laughs> but anyway, the truth is you have to look at facts. And most of what's happening is simple supply and demand. There was a huge spike in home buying demand in the last couple of years, and there weren't enough houses to keep up, and that's why houses skyrocketed. We still have a housing shortage, a tremendous inventory shortage. Demand is lower than it was, no question. People have slowed down on the buying, and it's more normalized the market. If you want to know more, watch our real estate reality check live stream that we did. Uh, almost 400,000 people have now viewed this. It was a big hit. It's completely free for you to watch. George Camel, Rachel Cruz, and I discussing the details and the actual data with actual charts and graphs and stuff. It's kind of cool. RamseySolutions.com slash reality check, and you'll find out what's really happening in the real world, not what the news says. RamseySolutions.com slash reality check our question of the day comes from blinds.com find out for yourself why blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings free samples free shipping and new promos all the time always use the magic word when you go to blinds.com it's the promo code ramsey Today's question comes from Mike in Texas. He says, my wife and I are debt free except our mortgage and a 401k loan that we use to pay off consumer debt. We desperately want to move out, uh, but we apparently missed the best time to sell our home. It's a beautiful house on a big corner lot. Since interest rates went up dramatically, our home just sits on the market. We've dropped our asking price as low as we can. Do we need to be patient with the current housing market or take it off the market and try again next year? Good question from Mike. So it, it was an amazing time. It's still a good time to sell the home. So there may be other factors here, Dave, that we don't know about, about this home sitting on the market. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. We don't know how long it's been sitting either. He hasn't yeah. said. Yeah, I mean, I, I have met people who put their house on the market and two weeks later are panicking because it hasn't sold. That's the question. Has it been two weeks or you know, has it been four months? But, There's a difference. Or has it been four years? I don't know. I mean, I missed it. I missed the one chance. No, you didn't. Um, so here's the thing. I don't know if you have an unrealistic view of what the house is worth. Uh, we've taken it as low as we can. What does that mean? Okay, so here's what I would do. Um, number one, the housing market, we just talked about that a second ago, has slowed down. And sellers are experiencing a more normal process. For 50 years, with the exception of a two-year period of time that we recently came through, the normal days on the market for a house selling was somewhere in the 60 to 120-day range. You know, two to four months. That was a normal time to sell a house. I mean, and there's been times it was a little bit slower and times it was a little bit faster but in general, that's what it was. And then we went through this two-year period of time where after COVID, people came out of their caves looking for houses like Baptist after a casserole. They were going nuts, and they drove these, you know, house was on the market for 32 minutes and had 87 offers. And uh, that spoiled everybody rotten. So here's the deal. We're back to a normal market. It's a 90 to 120-day days on the market, D-O-M, period that we're sitting in. And you have to have the house completely merchandised and staged and ready to go you need to clean the freaking bushes at the front yard so when you're standing in the street it doesn't look like trash lives there curb and appeal curb appeal call. bubba you know and you got to clean up the dad gum and you got to get the cat has to go visit somewhere else because nobody buys a house with a dad gum cat in it and so on right and and so you can't just put any old piece of trash on the market and it sell instantly anymore. So I don't know if you've got those kinds of problems. The other problem you may have is an unrealistic view of what the price is. See, values have not come down. Prices have. Because prices were many times someone fishing for uh, a sucker, a sucker fish. And they were looking for a sucker, and the price you price it at sucker price, and go, if it sells for that, I'll be a happy boy, you know. And but then you come down. You recently bought a property where a guy was yeah. fishing for sucker fish. Oh yeah. And you made him an offer complete with all the data that says the appraisal is worth less than you are asking, and you didn't steal the house, but you got it at appraisal. 
Yes, when you look at the comps in the neighborhood and go, what have homes actually closed for in the last 30 or 60 days? That gives you a much better idea of what this home is actually worth. Do not go to Zillow and go, well, my house is worth 850000 according to Zillow, Zillow Dave. Oh, God, no. So it should sell for eight hundred fifty because Zillow said so. Z- Zillow is no, just no. You remember the old MapQuest thing? Oh, yeah. Which pretty much was Greek for guaranteed to be lost. <laughs> Zillow is the map quest of real estate. You heard okay? it here first. So, yeah, don't, no, no. I mean, it's okay to look at it. It's, it's, Do it's, people still use map quest? Con- no. I mean, old people are the only ones even know about it. So, but, um, I mean, you know, you have the dial up. Yeah, and, and you print, print off the you instructions. print out the paper. 14-4, right? So, um, anyway, the, the, the point being, get a real real estate agent and get a real value and really stage the house. Put your feet up and get ready to ride it out for 90 to 120 days. And if in that period of time you don't sell it, then something else is going on, okay? But I think you might have an unrealistic view of how fast the market is. I think you might have an unrealistic view of the value of your home versus the price you put on it. Um, And the last thing is you're in Texas. You could be sitting near some of the areas that have been hammered, by the uh, oil, by the energy world being turned upside down, and a lot of people aren't working, and some of those individual markets are actually declining. Uh, it's not an it's not a nationwide thing, but you know you've got a mac a microeconomic situation going on in that community where a vast percentage, vastly large percentage of the buyers were. Uh, in the oil business in one way or another, and now they're not buying nothing because they ain't got a job or they don't have an income. And so that can cause a, a little miniature recession in a certain area that can affect your house price. Uh, that could be a thing. I don't think that's what's going on here. No. I think one of the other things we talked about is what's going on. I'd get an opinion from one of our trusted real estate agents and go, hey, look at this thing. What do you think? What do you think is going wrong here? And it may be time to switch real estate agents if they're not doing a great job getting some showings yeah. and offers. You need to have a realistic price. With realistic length of time expectations, a high prof- high quality professional real estate. Go to RamseySolutions.com. Click on ELP for Ramsey Trusted People, and, and, and you've got to stage the house and actually market it, and you know get it ready to sell to the public, which generally has no imagination. And so, if crap is all torn up in there, they can't see past it, and you won't sell the house. That's how houses have been marketed for 50 years. Yeah. And we talk a lot about this in our real estate reality check event of what is actually going on in the market. What is it still a good time to buy? Is it still a good time to sell? And we show the graph of the interest rates over time. And even though interest rates are going up, they're nowhere near what they were back when you were selling real estate. Oh, no, not. I mean, even when I started this show, they were they were in double digits when we started the show 30 years ago. Wow. And now if we had double digit interest rates, I mean, if we had a, if we had a 10 percent interest rate, can you imagine the wailing and gnashing of teeth? Can you imagine? But we were in 10% interest rate coming down from 18, so we were calling that blessed. And you were still selling houses at 18% oh, interest rate. Yeah, not a bunch, but they were selling. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wow. You were just a great real estate agent. Yeah, that's really what it. Was I'm just a, that's because it was at 22 years old, I was a genius. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Alan is with us in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Hey, Alan, what's up? Hey, how are you doing, guys? Hey, I got a quick question for you. Um, our son wants to buy his first house. Cool. He earns about a hundred thousand dollars a year, um, and he has forty thousand dollars in savings. Good. The like, question is, I'm trying to figure out how to financially help him, you know, get to twenty percent down or, or get off or close to it, um, without you know Uncle Sam reaching in going, "Well, I want some of your money that you want to give to your son." You can gift him uh, up to fifteen thousand. Your wife could gift him up to another fifteen thousand. You could gift your daughter-in-law another fifteen thousand, and she could gift your daughter-in-law another fifteen thousand. So up to sixty thousand, you can avoid gift tax simply by writing up to four checks and making them from one individual to another, not exceeding fifteen thousand. Chaos. That's what it can feel like when your business is growing so fast you've outgrown your financial and accounting software. 
The faster you grow, the more likely you are to lose control of the numbers. And here's the reality. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. That's why we use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. Over 28,000 companies use NetSuite by Oracle, including Ramsey Solutions, because NetSuite gives us a single view of everything we need to make daily decisions. Whether you're making a few million to hundreds of millions a year, NetSuite gives you the visibility and control of the things you need to grow, like your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more, all in one dashboard. Go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey right now to get their free white paper, Jumpstart Your CFO Career. George Camel Ramsey, personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. Nathan is with us in Gainesville, Florida. Hi, Nathan. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, thank you all for having me on. Sure. What's up? Um, my question today is I have – I'm closing on a house August 5th, um, and I currently have a car I owe 8800 on. I could resell it for fifteen, dollars um, but I've had – kind of a hard time finding anything that's even slightly reliable around that six to 7,000 mark. So I'm wondering if I should just um, punch out paying it off or search for something that will, you know, work for around that price. I would continue to do the research and, and get a $7,000 car before you get into this house. <clears throat> What's your other plan okay. if you don't do that? If you um, keep the car. My other plan is the, to keep the car, pay it off, and I have quite a bit of repairs I need to be doing on the house. I'm currently living rent-free with my grandpa, so I don't have to worry about um, payments until I get the house, which um, is, you know, next month. Um, but I've budgeted all that out. I've used every dollar, and uh, I think I'll be I'll be fine with the the payments, but just what do you make a year? Like, um, around forty. No whining. Sell so I mean, your car and find a six thousand dollar car, and don't tell me there's no yeah. such thing as a six thousand dollar car that's reliable. That's absolute BS. Yeah. Okay. Dude, you're about to get yourself in a pinch rationalizing your butt off here. Okay. Yeah. You, yeah, you're you're trying to do seventeen things at once. You know what you're supposed to do. You <clears> just wanted one of us to tell you. What kind of car is this that you have? Um, it's a Passat Volkswagen. Get Good a, Lord, you need to sell that anyway. Just get a Honda or a yeah. Toyota, <laughs> and you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Just get you an old Honda. It might an have old a Toyota. high mileage. They'll go three hundred thousand miles easy. Uh, that gum Honda Accords, man. They they really never just die. They never really die. They you just can't destroy live. them if you, you know, wanted they to. They just go forever. Yeah, you got to just do some shopping around. And and here's the thing: you just don't want to sell the car. You just don't want to make the move. You don't want and, to downgrade in car, and, and I And you shouldn't have boxed yourself in if you wanted to keep this car. But now you got this house that needs all these repairs. You make forty grand a year. You're living with your grandpa. Do you do these repairs? you got this house payment coming on, on a house that still needs repairs, and now you're talking about keeping a car payment. No! I feel stressed just hearing all that. Made me stressed. Oof. Yeah. I want to get into this house and have it be a blessing and not a curse. And that means no debt, no payments, other than we're focusing on this house. Yeah, we tell folks all the time, Nathan, you included, don't buy a home while you have debt. What? Yeah, really. Because Murphy will move in your spare bedroom. Sally May will move in the other bedroom. Heat and air will go out the first week you move in. The roof will leak the third week you move in. You're asking for trouble when you move into a house with a bunch of debt. And people rationalize it all the time, and they keep getting more and more debt, more and more debt, more and more debt, and then they get stressed out, and then they get the, they get the crap knocked out of them by life then. And so, but I, I do the same thing. I, I try to figure out a way to get to do all the stuff I want to do at the same time. Where none of us like saying no, even to ourselves. But I guess it's kind of one of our spiritual gifts here at the show. We're supposed to be here just to tell you what you already knew. Uh, no, you don't need to keep this car. Yeah, uh, if you were going to keep this car, you shouldn't have bought this house, and too late, you've already bought this house. So yeah, you need something's got to go. And if you can get out from under this car and make profit, I'm doing that. Oh, definitely. Hannah is in Ann Arbor. Hi, Hannah. How are you? Hello. What's up? 
Hi, uh, I have a question in regards to kind of the housing market and housing grants. Um, first off, we make roughly seven thousand or seventy thousand um, dollars. My husband's in part time ministry. He does also a W two. I'm a ten ninety nine, um, and that's combined together that we make. Um, do you guys? We're just trying to get out of a kind of a profits chamber kind of situation. A, a, a what um, situation? Uh, we live on our church property. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so it's it's good, but it's it has its setbacks, too. We've been there for three years. It's been great, but we just need to get out now. We kind of have a time frame that we need to get out yeah. by. Yeah. Um, and we're just wondering, we follow your baby steps. We're out of credit card debt. We only have our car loan, and we're trying to stock, you know, pay that off as fast as we can, but mm-hmm. also put away money at the same time because we have a time frame to get out. And so our perspective, our question is, what do you guys think about housing grants? I do live in Michigan. If that kind of what kind of housing thing. grant are you looking at? Um, it's what's called a Mishta grant. Um, it they changed it a few years ago. It used to be forgivable. It's not forgivable now, is my understanding. You do have to pay that back when you sell it. Mm -hmm. Um, or you refinance the house. Mm -hmm. It's up to what we qualify for. What I'm told is 10 grand. Mm -hmm. So they give you 10 grand that you have to give them back the first time you refinance or sell. Correct. That is my under, that is my Mm -hmm. um, understanding. of. I think there's probably some other strings to this that you need to understand that are probably going to make this less than palatable. Okay. When you get further into it. I doubt it is mm-hmm. quite as simple as, I don't know. I don't know the program, but I doubt, okay. I mean, I've been in the real estate, in and around real estate my whole life. And so lots of first time home buyer programs out there across the nation. This sounds like it might have some other things tied to it. I would learn about that. But I also wouldn't tell you to buy a house right now. You're broke. You just need to go rent something. Okay. You don't need to be buying a house with a car payment. Gotcha. How much do you owe on your car? Uh, eight. Yeah. Actually, seven. We and why is your husband lot. part-time? Does he have a full-time job in addition to that? Yes, he does. He works four days a week uh, for a, a W-2 um, What does he do four company? days a week? He works at a he chemical company, I guess. It's a shipping, he's a shipping manager. Okay, good. Okay. And so, but his heart is in ministry, and so he took a, yes. a an additional part time job as the uh, as a pastor, and they with that gave you guys a parsonage use, and now that's coming to an end. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd be getting out of debt, and let's go rent somewhere. Let's get an emergency fund in place of three to six months. Then we can focus on a down payment. This is all while we're renting. How much have you got in the savings? Um, roughly thirteen. Fifteen thousand. Yeah, it's thirteen thousand. Thirteen thousand. So you can pay off your debt? only yeah. debt is an eight thousand dollar car. Yes. Great. Pay it off when you get off the phone, please. Okay. Today, I want you to be free, okay. and then I want you to save aggressively. Can you stay in the parsonage a little while longer, and with no car payment, quickly build up a down payment? If not, then I'm going to have you go rent for six months and build up your down payment that way. Okay. Please don't move into a house with a car payment. Please, please, for your sake, don't move into a house with a car payment. You're asking for trouble. You're you're letting the timing of this parsonage deal running out drive your financial decisions instead of wise financial decision making. You're being forced into doing something. You feel like you're being forced into doing something dumb, and uh, and rent in your case is just buying some time. It's patience. So if you have to rent for six months or a year while you build up your down payment, fine. But pay off your car today. Today. And these grants, they often seem like, wow, they're really helping us out. But I just heard this is a loan. Yeah. It's like these student loans. They go, oh, we're going to give you scholarships and grants. No, you gave me a subsidized loan. Thank you so much. It doesn't have any interest on it. I mean, we did, when I was doing rehabs years ago, I took a historic grant on a historic house. They gave me $5,000 to do repairs. But what came with it was everything on the house had to be put back by the way they defined historic period, which included no railing around the front porch, which codes required. That's complicated. So I either have to 
do what the hysteric people want me to do or I have to do what codes wants me to do. But if I don't do what the hysteric people say, I don't get the $5,000. And if I do the hysteric thing, then I, then codes won't give me a use and occupancy permit. So I'm like, why don't you people that all work for the government get together and like talk and stuff? That sounds too difficult. You know, but th- there's a reason that codes came up with um, railings around front porches since 1901, because people kept falling off and breaking their faces. But Dave, and history. So there it is. Preserve you know? the history. Yeah, but we want the history of the broken face. Oh, my God. But this is grants. There's always something tied in there, and I'm always a little weary. I'm from, you know, the scariest words in the English language. I'm from the government, and I'm here to help. This is The Ramsey Show. show george camel ramsey personality is my co-host today scott's in indianapolis hey scott how are you real good thank you i appreciate you taking my call sure what's up i uh recently retired i'm 62 uh not taking social security yet uh i rolled my form 1k over into an ira uh i've got about 208,000 in a pension I uh, didn't know if I should pay my car, my wife's student loan, or her car, my wife's student loan, and the house off. How much and does all that add up to? About 80000 Which would leave you with $128,000, right? Roughly, but I have to pay tax on it because it wasn't taxed. Yeah. You have any other nest egg? Uh, 13000 You don't have another 401k? Your wife doesn't have anything else? This is it? Well, she's got a 401k they started about two years ago. She may have around 16 in it right now. Okay. But the 401k that I had, I rolled that over into an IRA. How much you owe in your and car? Was, uh, about nine, ninety-five roughly. And what's the student loan? About ninety-five, about fifty-nine, five on the house. Oh. Okay, so sixty thousand on the house, twenty thousand on the other stuff. Right. Okay. I would pay off the other stuff for sure. And okay. uh, you're 62. How old is she? Uh, she's 62 also. Did you say you retired? Uh, from the job I was at, yes. Are you working? I cannot, I'm not working right now. I can go back to work if I want, but I don't want to. I, I don't blame you. And uh, <laughs> does she work? Yes. So what works. is your household income with you being retired? Uh, with just her, I'm going to guess about 45 to 50. Okay. When did she take out these student loans? Um, I'm going to guess two or three years ago, maybe longer. Oh, so she just Uh, recently went to school? Well, she, when she did go to it, she dropped out of it. It was over uh, computer classes over yeah, okay. the, on the computer. Yeah. She didn't actually go to a, a school. Okay, Here, here's what's bouncing around in my mind, Scott, and you guys can talk about this tonight and decide what you want to do. Okay. okay. I don't like leaving you only 100000 bucks. Right. That's a small nest egg. That can go away in about three blinks, right? That scares yeah. me. Okay. Uh, I don't like any of this, but I really don't like that. I don't like that feeling. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. So what I would probably do if I woke up in your shoes, I don't like, because I don't like the strain of being that broke at 62, um, I would write a check today and pay off the the two little debts. And right. then I would take some kind of fun thing that makes me smile that's not, that pays really, really ridiculously good. What did you used to do? Uh, what does uh, in the propane business. What did you do in the propane business? Set tanks, okay. big lines. Okay. 
All regulators, right. and I was a mechanic before. Gotcha. Okay. So, is there some kind of tinkering, turning of a wrench that makes you smile that you enjoy doing? Yeah, I like working on my hands. Yeah, I mean, you sound like I you're that guy. Or mechanic, or kind of a handyman, I guess. If, yeah, I mean, if you, you could, know, if you could, if thing. you could tinker around and make sixty thousand dollars over the next couple of years and pay the house off, that'd be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Okay. Without without breaking uh, your back and screwing up your retirement happiness, right? Right, right. I mean, you don't have to take 80 hours a week unless you wanted to work 80 hours a week for six months and had to get this over with. I don't know. But um, I doubt that's available. It could be. I don't know. But, I mean, if there's something – and a lot of stuff like this might be you just starting some kind of little side thing like handyman. People are paying ridiculous money for handyman I'm one of those people, Dave. You you, can make 50, 75 (laughs) bucks an hour just doing general handyman work. Stuff George George doesn't know what a screwdriver is, Exactly. I'm not talking back-breaking stuff, but it's stuff that you know how to do and other people don't. Yeah, you get, get, get a good millennial like George that doesn't know what a screwdriver is and charge him a lot. I'd rather watch Netflix than hang pictures up, Dave. I'm sorry. That's my generation. God, I'm sorry. It's just pitiful, George. It's pitiful. But I like I like the idea of paying off the little debts, knocking them out, yeah. and then getting back to work for a short period of time, getting rid of all the payments. Here's the thing, Scott. You might mess around with this handyman thing and make a lot of money doing it, and it might actually be fun if you didn't, because you don't have to do it. It's no longer work. It's like the cool thing I'm doing. Oh, and by the way, I'm gonna pay the house off. When the house is paid off, and you've got 150 thousand bucks in there. A little more than that. Your wife's 401ks continue to build for a couple, three more years. Y'all's nest egg starts to be, you know, bumping up maybe two, three hundred now. I'm feeling a lot more comfortable. Yeah, you can actually retire with some dignity. You. Feeling more comfortable for you. Christian's with us in San Jose. Hi, Christian. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello, Mr. Ramsey. Hello, Mr. Camel. How you guys doing? Great, man. What's up? Hey, so my question is whether or not I should sell my home uh, with my wife and, um, either rent something out or uh, buy a new home. Okay. Why would you do that? Um, so right now we live in Hollister, California. Um, our commute is about an hour. Um, when we do commute, uh, usually we just stay with my mother-in-law. So we're rarely ever at home. Okay. Well, it does sound like a move is in order in the direction of your work. What do you make of your household yeah. income? Uh, together we make approximately 180 to 200,000 a year. Cool. Well, that's good news. Well, you live in a super expensive area, so I was hoping you made some money. Um, yeah. So if you sell and rebuy in the other area that's closer, does that work? The thing is, uh, right now our current home, um, we owe 545,000. It's approximately a hundred or 830,000 mm-hmm. is what it's worth. Mm-hmm. But everything we're looking for in San Jose, California, is yeah. approximately one point two million. Yeah, I bet. Uh, great news is you make one hundred and eighty, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So what I would do uh, is quit looking at one point two. I mean, that that may be the worst house in San Jose. It's possible. That's a super high area. Uh, but the uh, but I'm going to really try to find the the house that's even worse than that that you're just really ashamed of and hate in and at least make your move and get your life back on the commute and then start saving like crazy and move up into a little better house in that same community then. But I'm not, you know, all of this together does not equal buy something you can't afford and beats the crap out of you with the monthly payment. And you're sitting in the corner sucking your thumb because your house poor. Nothing is worth that. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Don't do that. So can you split the difference and maybe you live 20 minutes out from San Jose and you can no. find a place that's, you know, 800,000, 700. Expensive. No, 20 minutes out is what he's talking about. I mean, it's, 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 that's just, you're just dealing with Silicon Valley, man. I mean, it's Oof. just unbelievable. Yeah, it's gross. I mean, it, it, it's, um, it's a ridiculous world when you make $180,000 and can't live in. That's a lot. That's a crazy world. But it is the world you're in, dude. I mean, it's, uh, I mean. You got kids? Yeah, I mean, it's I mean, just, it's, he, I, I, it's I think you, I think you start too. trying to make the move, but you just make it super conservative and uncomfortable. You're going to choose your discomfort. Yeah. Choose the hour commute or a house that sucks as a stepping stone to a house that doesn't suck and that you build up with your, because you, your income, you're young enough, your incomes are going to continue to go up. You're in that market and man, 
That's tough. Because even with, you know, 280 down on the new one, yeah. on a 1.2, you're looking at an astronomical monthly payment. Oh, yeah, yeah. Even it, making it's 180. Just, it's, just, it's just hard. But, but that's, you don't get a pass again, on math. You can't, you got to have the income to do the deal. Regardless, you don't get a pass just because I chose to live there. It means you can't live there or whatever. So it's, um, when I was growing up, we lived uh, across the tracks on the other side of the tracks over here, literally. I mean, behind me, there's some tracks. And so one county over from here. And this county that we're in is a very wealthy county. And uh, we used to talk about the rich people that lived over here. And we went, you can't live over there, you know. We, we couldn't afford to live over here. We weren't bad people, but we weren't poor people over here. Yeah. It's expensive. And so that's just what you're facing. I mean, sometimes you look across the tracks and you just can't afford to live over there. Uh, and until your income changes or something else changes. you got to adjust you know? your expectations. It's, it's hard just, to do. That's hard. That puts us out of the Ramsey Show in the books. George Camel, James, Andrew, Zach, Ben, and Austin in the booth. This is the Ramsey Show. Do you love a good Dave rant? Want to see the latest Ramsey Show videos going viral? Check out your favorite moments from the Ramsey Show on YouTube. Go watch and subscribe to the Ramsey Show channel on YouTube. of Ramsey Solutions. It's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth, do work that they really love, and create actual amazing relationships. George Camel, Ramsey personality, host of the fine print on Ramsey Networks, is my co-host today. Open phones here at 888-825-5225. Nancy's in Orlando to start off this hour. Hi, Nancy. How are you? Hey there, Dave and George. Fine. Thank you. And thank you for my call. Sure. What's up? Um, my husband and I are in Baby Step 7, and we want to set the goal of being Baby Step millionaires. But I don't know how to establish our current net worth. We primarily off of his post office pension, but since it's not a liquid lump sum, I'm guessing we can't include it. So I can't determine a per month investment goal because the RIQ process doesn't include the pension or our paid for home. So I don't know where to start. Ah, very cool. Well, you're right. Technically speaking, a pension is not part of your net worth because you can't sell it or you can't cash it out and use it. And so it's just a stream of income that's promised to you. In other words, Social Security is not part of my net worth, but I'll be getting Social Security someday, right? So it's the same yeah. thing. Uh, but Because net worth is assets minus liabilities. But that's not really your issue. I mean, it'd be, it's fun for you to keep up with your net worth. And, um, you know, you've got a – when you have a, ba a – a baby steps when you're a baby steps millionaire, you have a million dollar net worth, and on top of that, have this pension. Life's gonna be pretty sweet, you know. So, what <laughs> yes. what you're looking at is just your 401k and your house, and you know what you own minus what you owe is the thing. And then, as far as calculating it, what your need is, you know, you just basically say, I'm, you know, figure out what it is I'm gonna need per month, and and working in your RIQ, and then. Take the pension out of that because you got the pension. So if your need is five thousand dollars a month and you got three thousand dollars worth of pension, then your net need is two thousand dollars. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yes, with us both in our sixties, I don't know that we'll live long enough to actually hit millionaire status. Be an optimist, Nancy. What's your house worth? <laughs> I'm so, uh, probably three hundred. Okay, and, and what's in your four hundred one k? Oh, we have only. Um, the smart, our IRAs with the smart Vester pro 32. Okay. Okay. All right. So you've got a 300,000, $350,000 net worth probably, right? You have other assets yes, that sir. we're not discussing here? No. Okay. And are you both working still? Yes. And what's your household income? Oh, good question. I would say 55. Okay. Um, I don't, it just depends on how long you live. You'll probably get there in your 70s somewhere. 
if you continue really? if you continue to save pretty aggressively because the house is going to go up in value and you're going to continue to add to a 401k that's assuming you're working and adding money to it now if you quit work at, yeah. at 62 you know no you're probably not going to get there no. But it's okay, okay if you don't. So it's okay if you don't. The million dollar net worth is not a magic thing. It's just a measure of net worth. That's all it is. And so the question of is it enough? Well, if you have, what's your pension going to pay you? Oh, we can already live off the pension. What's the pension so going to pay the you? Issue is, um, we're getting 24 six and then he's already taking SSI, and I'm, keep, I'm holding off until age 70. I'm sorry. You, for he, my, I, you broke up when you gave me the number. How much are you getting? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, his pension's twenty four sixty, and then he's currently getting his Social Security. I won't take mine until I'm seventy. Two thousand four hundred sixty dollars a month. Yes. Okay. All right. So you got a nice pension plus your social or your, your SSI and mm-hmm. stuff, and so yeah, you guys can make it on that. So you're not in trouble. Um, it's just oh, a, it's yeah. just kind of a math game. It's a monopoly game now. You're just it's a fun milestone along the journey. But can you have a great retirement and not get there? Sure. Can you have a terrible one depending on your lifestyle and what's going on? Absolutely. If you want to spend sixty thousand dollars a year, you're going to have a terrible one. Yes. So we we'll have not, to adjust. You're, your you're not in shape to do that. Uh, but if you keep your income, your lifestyle below your pension income, uh, and continue to save and grow the other stuff, then yeah, you could end up with a lot of situation there. Which goes along with our original principle: live on less than you make. That applies in baby step one and seven. There you go. It's a key principle, and we have we do have a great net worth calculator at RamseySolutions.com. That if you're listening and you're curious, you can jump on there, and it'll add up all the assets, it'll add up all the liabilities, and do the math for you. Joe is in Fresno, except I pushed the wrong button there. Joe is in Fresno. How are you, Joe? Hi, I'm doing great. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. How can we help? Well, um, my wife is here to keep the story straight, but <laughs> simply... Because <laughs> uh, Joe's are, known are, for exaggerating. Joe's attorney is present. <laughs> um, we, we're, we just retired. We were both in education, and our income together is about 6000 a month and we live in a house that is worth roughly around 500,000 and we owe about 268 and so we're in the valley of decision on do we spend the money to fix it up kind of what i want and then my wife is saying the heck with it uh let's sell it and go buy another house so she's saying is it going to be better for us to fix it up and live in it or do we uh cut loose on it and go find uh, maybe a smaller house we're empty nesters like i said we're retired and just trying to figure things out figure things out mm-hmm. okay um well the answer to the question if it was my house is uh what's going to be the how old are you today i am 61 okay what's going to be the best story when you're 71 which one of these plans gets you the best life when you're 71 the fixed up house and you stayed in it or the downsize into a newer house and you didn't have to screw with the repairs that's a good question that's the answer to the question is which one gives you the best life because oftentimes what happens is these things get so close to our face that we're making a decision based on the emotions of the next 12 months rather than the next 12 years. And the 12-year window will give you a better decision-making paradigm. Right. What kind of repairs are we talking, Joe? Have you done the math, and what's this going to cost? Yeah, I'm thinking it's going to cost about maybe uh, 30000 which, you know, being in education, I have decided that I can go back and do become a sub-teacher and... Uh, if I work, work it, I could probably make those that much money in a year and, you know, get all those little things that she wants done. Uh-huh. Um, and it still or, won't be the right house and be perfect. Well, no, when, when, when it's done, why is it that she wants to move if she didn't like it when it was done? Um, that's a good question. I think some of it is that uh, she wants to move into a little smaller house because... Um, she's, uh, you know, we're empty nesters and wanted a little small house, maybe easier to clean. Who knows? I think you have your answer, Joe. <laughs> you just answered it. Happy wife, happy life. This ain't the house. This is the Ramsey Show.
look, I love real estate and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership, and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey, to start your approval or get more information. George Camel, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. What's your one-day goal? Maybe one day I'll be able to buy a house. Maybe one day I'll be happy with my career. One day I won't have to battle with anxiety anymore. One day I'll be out of debt. Stop waiting around. Whatever your one day is, you need to start towards it right now. And that's why we created Smart Conference. Smart Conference is a full-day event where you will hear from best-selling authors in on anxiety on careers on money on leadership on marriage the top people in the nation all day long in every area of your life it's only $39 and you can get a four pack for only $120 and bring some friends you can't get a concert to I just saw a thing where Adele was 40,000 bucks to get in so Yikes. the tickets are going. So, I mean, you could buy out the whole smart conference for that, just about. Your Ticketmaster fees are more than 40 bucks. Yeah, so 120 bucks, and you don't have Ticketmaster with us. We are, can, we are our own Ticketmaster. We are our own master. That's right. We master our own tickets. Thank you very That's much. Right. None of those janky fees. RamseySolutions.com slash events. The smart conference is in Dallas, Saturday, October 22nd. We're glad you're coming. Uh, several That's thousand fun. of you are already, are already registered, and it only holds like, I think it was 7,000 people's all, so That's right. it will be a sellout early, and you will need to get your tickets now if you want to go. Well, George, one of the things that happens in a world gone crazy is that people decide they're going to just change the definitions of things. That's called relativism, and you can just decide a new definition of a thing. By people, do you mean the White House? Today, it was okay. the White House. There we go. They decided they wanted a, to, to redefine because they're the White House, and they can do that. They get to decide that what we all thought something was, what we've been taught in every class that we've ever gone to that something was, that it is not that thing. To be fair, John Deloney wrote a book called Redefining Anxiety. See, he, def he there it is. He, he redefined it. He redefined he it. He decided. But, but when he finished, it was still anxiety, I'll tell you that. That's okay, right. so. <laughs> so here's a real article from WhiteHouse.gov. From the White House website. How do economists determine whether the economy is in a recession? There's the headline. And what does it go on to say, Dave? This is very interesting. What is a recession? While some maintain that con two consecutive quarters of falling real GDP constitute a recession, that is neither the official definition nor the way economists evaluate the state of the business cycle. Uh, let me just stop you right there. Ball! Every Econ 101 class in the United States that was not taught by the Biden administration has defined a recession since God was a boy as two consecutive shrinking quarters of the GDP. Bull! 
Okay, now let me just so, make sure I got that straight. It goes on to say, instead, both official determinations of recessions and economists' assessment of economic activity are based on a holistic look at the data, including labor market, consumer and business spending, industrial production, and incomes. Based on these data, it is unlikely that the decline in GDP in the first quarter of this year, even if followed by another decline in the second quarter, indicates a recession. If the economy continues to shrink, it must not be a recession because we decided it wasn't a recession. My, I am dumber for having read this paragraph. Brain cells died while I read this paragraph. How did someone write this in good conscience and good faith? Well, they write word salads up there all the time. Oh, that's right. Oh, my gosh. This so, is a political word salad. Yeah. Explain why they're doing this, because there's a very clear reason to me. Well, it's, yeah, it's classic politics. I mean, you remember when Bill Clinton said we had to define the word is? That's right. It's, you well, know, it depends on what your depends definition on what you mean of by is. is is. Depends on what you mean by recession. Well, I actually mean a recession. Two consecutive quarters of the GDP shrinking. And that's not a Republican well, or Democrat thing. That's just a thing. It's called economics. That's uh, just Merriam-Webster's opinion, it's like Dave. overdrawn on your checking account. Well, unless I decide I don't really want to call it that, I kind of feel like I'm getting good use of the bank's money. Right. And Was the money really there? A holistic approach to your checking account involves overdraft fees. And a holistic approach to your uh, student loan is, is that you keep it your whole stupid life. Uh, there's a ho- I mean, holistic? What wow. are you, a witch doctor? Holistic economics. This is a whole new way of getting at this. There's going to be a college course about this very topic. Oh, my God. So the real reason is Okay, so the real, reason, the real reason is politics, okay? We're going in the midterm elections, and the last thing that the Democrat, Democratic White House wants is for the Republicans to run around saying we're in a recession because we actually freaking are, and so they throw a bunch of Democrats out, or the voters throw a bunch of Democrats out of office. That's all it is. They just don't want to be in a recession going into these midterms. So this and is so all And so they have PR. to change the definition of recession. This is a 1,000% a PR move. Uh, political BS? Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, so, yeah, it depends on what your definition of red is. Blue, green. I wonder what the definition is. Is this a blue shirt? Oh, I know. Holistically looking at the shirt, it has some little black lines in it. That's right. And I decided it's going to identify as a black shirt today instead of a blue shirt. So there you go. And we're not going to identify this as a recession. I'm going to self-identify it as prosperity. Maybe the White House is economically colorblind. There we go. That's one it's one reason. <laughs> There's so many things I can I'm sorry. say to that we'll that I'm there. not going to say. Interesting article. <laughs> if you want to get dumber, go read it for yourself at White oh, House. Oh god, I feel like I really have This is like oh, this is like the 70s were the 70s were good to the person whose parents wrote this. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh Ooh. my god. They're, like their their parents were had drug use. Choices were made had at a child Woodstock. while they were doing drugs and that person wrote this paragraph. Oh, my God. Wow. LSD was involved. I'm just saying. Oh, my gosh. This makes no sense. I don't care. I mean, listen, if Trump was going into a recession, we're going into a recession. I I don't care who puts you there. I'm not even sure we're in one. I thought we were going into one. I at least can tell you that based on the data that will come out this week, you should get the data this week, that the second quarter may not have shrunk. So this may all be for nothing. So but, what actually but happens? But I'm just offended that we get to redefine these terms to the convenience of a politician. And if we are or are not in a recession, does Depends it change Depends on how you define day-to-day? is. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. You can't define are until you've defined is. I'm going to walk around with a dictionary from now on. <laughs> it's the only way. Well, Dave. it's relativism because you have to do critical thinking that isn't really thinking. There's no source of truth it's anymore. It's just critical. Oh, boy. You people. This is exhausting. Yeah. So here's the thing. Let's just pretend that uh, when the data comes out this week that we had two consecutive quarters of the economy shrinking. Here's what we do pretty much know, that it just barely shrunk. And if it didn't shrink, it just barely grew. It basically is right around even, which means it's not prosperous. But we're not all going to hell in a handbasket. So it's okay? not going to be a hurricane so tomorrow. If we're not prospering. It's not a good economy, but it's not a horrible hurricane. We're all going to die recession either. We know that. Even if it is a recession, it's just not that much of one. It's kind of a light rain, not even a good thunderstorm. Come on. And so that, that people are running around with their helmets on because the tornado is coming. But the um, – uh, but, yeah, no. Hey, here's uh, – 
So to Biden, to Biden or the Democrats defense, the Republicans are going to make a whole lot more uh, deal out of the recession than it really is. The headlines on their side will make it feel You're going like to die it's and it's Joe Biden's fault. That's what they're going to do, right? That's not true either. OK, because it's just not that bad. It's not that it's not that stinky of a recession, but it's nothing to walk around bragging about. And it's nothing to be so concerned about that you have to redefine terms because we now know that the Democratic Party does not know the definition of is or the definition of a recession because they change it at will. I just want a fake book cover of John Deloney and it says redefining recessions <laughs> oh, just God. as a spoof. Just yeah, we gotta, someone's going to do it now. Please They're gonna send bring it to that me. back for April. So the deal is you don't get to re define a word to fit your agenda boys and girls well you can and some of you have pulled it off um some of you have taken words and they mean completely other things now because of your activism and your areas that you're in but here's one that well not gonna work this time one plus one is two can't change that sorry it's just two consecutive quarters of gdp shrink is a recession sorry joe not getting by with that word salad this is the Ramsey Show. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit, whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions, on the dead free stage, Joe and Jordan are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Good. How are you doing, Dave? Welcome. Welcome. Better than I deserve. Where do you live? Uh, Quincy, Michigan. So we're about 40 minutes southeast of Battle Creek. Perfect. Hey, good to have you guys. Welcome to Nashville. How much debt have you paid off? $265,000. Good for you. And how long did that take? Uh, five years, uh, four and a half, or four months, and uh, 13 days. That'll work. <laughs> <laughs> and your range of income during that five years, four and a half months? Um, the bulk of it was 118000 to 171000 And then the last six months, um, Joe had gotten a promotion, and I took a job in a new company, and that pushed our income to 240 Whoa. Woo. Look at you. Way to go, guys. Okay, but five years and 265000 is that your house? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Way to go, oh. weird people! Thank you. Incredible. How old are you, weirdos? I'll be 38 on Thursday. And I'm 36. And you have a paid-for house. Yes. Yeah. You're weird. <laughs> oh, I love it. Very cool. What's the house worth? Uh, like 220 Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. How much you got in retirement accounts? About 180 Yeah. So you're bumping a half million right now in net worth mm -hmm. on your way to be a millionaire. It's probably by the time you're 45 or 50. Way to go, guys. You're killing it. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And was with it, this income, probably 45. Was there now. other debt in here, too? Yes. Yeah. What kind? Uh, so cell phones was about 2000 Credit cards, 2000 um, Cars, 20000 150000 in student loan debts. Oh, there it is. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. And then 91 for the house. Okay. Wow. You guys are impressive. You plowed through a bunch of stuff here. All right. Tell us the story. What happened five years ago that got you guys on this journey? And how'd you hook up with this Ramsey stuff? So I've heard of you. 
when I was in college, one of my best friends um, mentioned that her brother followed your program, and then I started seeing you on the news with your little segments, and then I would be driving and see your billboards, and I'm like, okay, well, he's probably got something there. But then it was December 2016, Joe and I were getting our um, tax refund stuff around, all the things we could write off, and at the time it was $2,500 in student loan interest that you could write off, and mm -hmm. so we you know, compiled all our student loans and we realized we paid over 10 grand that year just in student loan interest. And um, in that same moment, Joe said, and just so you know, at the time we just had one child, but he's like, just so you know, I want us to pay for our kids' college. And I was like, you're nuts. Like, we're gonna still be paying on our student loans till we're 50. And he's like, well, whatever, we're, we're doing that for them. I said, well, then we need to get our act together. So I ordered your book right then. Hmm. I read it in two or three days. I relayed the information to Joe and we were game on. Total money makeover. Yep. Here we go. Just all the stuff coming at you and then all of a sudden you went, oh, I need that total money makeover book now. Yep. Sounds okay. like you annoyed yourself into this plan. You're like, this Dave guy and all the student loan interest. You're like, fine, I'll do it. <laughs> well, I feel like maybe I was just too immature to actually listen, <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> but once we, you know, grew up right in that moment and decided to you know, follow your plan. Your plan works if you yeah. follow it. So, yeah, yeah. so Joe, when she comes to you, she starts reading this book and she's trying to uh, kind of give you the Cliff Notes version and go, this is what it says. Uh, were you resistant? I was Dave-ish. Uh-huh. Um, you know, and, and stopping well, the retirement and, yeah. you know, saying no to everything and, yeah. and budget. And yeah. I was like, eh, yeah, you know, we can, we can dabble. We can see what happens. And then as we started to get the loans in order and the debt snowball, then I was gung ho. Yeah, well, I, you kind of saw it. You, start, you saw it start to click. Yeah, and, and I was all in. He yeah. would pull out our spreadsheet almost every day and be like, "Okay, like if we could just knock this one out, and you know, a month earlier, this, you know, he was always looking for ways to speed up the game a little bit. So yeah. we're both competitive. So having that goal yeah. and beating it, that was, yeah. that was." fun for us well the traction the yeah. traction is a big thing mm -hmm. yeah. yeah if you don't have that vision and that goal you're going why are we doing this you got to have that piece of, of the pie to the piece of the puzzle to go now i'm angry and like you said where else can we do we're, we're we got 200 in margin what if we had 500 how could that speed it up exactly yeah. and it becomes a little bit addictive yep very in process in a good way yes, yes absolutely what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is um i think changing your mindset first uh, debt is so normal in our society. Mm. I mean, I was going to order a shirt online and I noticed you could sign up for five interest-free payments of $4. I'm uh, like, if thank you, Klarna. Yes, exactly. Klarna. So Sounds change, like something's caught in your throat. Yes. So just changing your mindset that debt is just a part of life. It It is for so many people, but it sucks and it, it takes away from a lot in your future. So changing that mindset and then also believing that you're deserving of a great life Mm. and just following your plan. I mean, yeah. truly, if people just follow your steps, they work if they work them. So, Yeah, there's a lot of shame and guilt and arrogance that we carry around when it comes to money. And when you can just be an adult, look in the mirror and go, it ain't pretty, but we're going to fix this. Mm -hmm. I'm in control. Yep. That changes everything. Exactly. I'm so proud of you guys. Way to go, you guys. Thank How's you. it feel to be completely free? No house payment, man. It's amazing. It's surreal. Y'all are whacked. <laughs> what do your friends think about all this? Um, they're happy for us. They've encouraged us, you know, said they're proud of us. And um, they probably think we're weird, which is fine. You are. Normal's, <laughs> normal's broke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you guys aren't broke. I mean, you got serious net worth, not a debt in the world. What's the first big thing that... Uh, you guys want to do now that you don't have a single payment? We're taking the girls up north to the UP in Michigan for a whole week and, you know, experiencing God's country up there. So. Yeah, it is, Ooh, it is pretty up it there. It is. Yeah. Yeah, our own uh, 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 Courtney's husband is from up oh, there. Yeah. And Courtney was actually an a anchor up there, a news anchor up there for a while up in Traverse City. And oh, yeah, very Ma pretty. Meg Meeker's up there, too. So, yeah, yep. it's a beautiful area. Very. Yeah, that'll be a fun, fun thing. The Upper Peninsula, UP, UP to you yes. Michigan people. Yes. 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 <laughs> it's like, okay, well, hey, guys, way to go. Thank you. Thank you. Very fun. We're Thank very you for proud everything. of you. We, we, we love seeing people like you. You're, you're an inspiration. You're amazing heroes. So we've got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. Uh, that's the next chapter in your story for sure. 
How Ordinary People Built Extraordinary Wealth, How You Can Too. It's our latest number one. And we got a one-year subscription to Financial Peace University. If you haven't been, go through it. It's the brand new videos with George and Dr. John Deloney and me and Rachel. And uh, we'd love to have you do that or give it to somebody that needs to get on this plan, one of the two. Um, or buy it for somebody and you go through I don't care whatever you do and we've got a copy of Total Money Makeover you give away too like the thing the book that got you started so thank you very very well done all right you brought the kiddos what are their names and ages okay so the oldest is Logan she is six all right this is Layton she is four and Lane here is two all right the beautifuls are in the picture <laughs> oh that's so <laughs> fun Sweet there we go. that is so <laughs> fun look at that that's great that right there's a good why absolutely you guys are changed their lives you've changed their family tree they don't even know what you've done for them no nope, but we'll remind them don't worry yeah i'm reminding <laughs> them right now they can watch this video over and over <laughs> that's right the price that their mom and dad paid live like no one else so later you can live and give like no one else so their Absolutely. dadgum college fund got the, <laughs> that's what got this whole thing to start oh, yeah. is a yep. discussion over that so that's beautiful well done you guys you're you're amazing very well done. So proud of you. All right. It's Joe and Jordan, Logan, Layton, and Lane from Battle Creek, Michigan area. $265,000 paid off five years, four months, 13 days, 118 to 171 to 240 income. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're debt-free! <laughs> She brought it, man. Wow. Well done. Woo-hoo-hoo. Yeah. I'm loving this trend, Dave. I'm seeing, we're seeing a lot of people in their 20s, 30s paying off their homes early. They're and, getting, and right on the early. verge of being baby step millionaires already. I mean, they're it's setting incredible. themselves up. But here's the thing. That little girl is old enough to remember the oldest one. Mm-hmm. Maybe the little, maybe the little four-year-old, but certainly the oldest one, Logan. The weird day that her weird mom and dad came to this weird place in Tennessee and screamed they're debt free. And she'll be a grandma someday telling her kids that have $10 million each mm. where it all started. That's a legacy worth leaving. That's called changing your family tree. This is The Ramsey Show. Thanks for joining us, America. George Camel, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Katie's with us in Dallas, Texas. Hi, Katie. How are you? Katie? Are you there, Katie? Hi, Katie. Yes, I'm good. How are you? Great. How can we help? So I'm $27,000 in credit card debt. I've used up 100% of my credit, dug myself a hole, and I don't know how to get out. How old are you? I am 32. How much do you make a year? Uh, I gross 83. Is this the only debt you've got? It is. This is awesome. I'm so glad you're here. This is a good problem to have with this income, Katie. We can clean this up fast. Is it on one card or multiple? It's on six different cards. Okay. That's wonderful. Biggest one being Discover, 12,000. All right. And you clearly want to get out of this. How'd you get into it? What'd you spend uh, the credit card money on? Um, just transitioning over from one job to another, paying my way. Bull crap. Got into debt. Yep. Bull crap. You did not spend twenty seven thousand dollars transitioning from one job to another. Uh I started out that way and then it kept growing. Yeah. So it was kind of an addiction. Yeah. I had a problem. Kept spending you the spent five thousand dollars transitioning from one job to another, and you're disorganized, and you overspent buying crap you can't afford for the rest of it. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Yep. 
So I want to make sure that we at least change the behavior because we can help you get out of debt. I just don't want you back in this mess, you know, two years from now. And so what I want you to do is cut up the cards. We're done with those. You're going to list out the debts from smallest to largest. So the smallest credit card debt to the largest one, we're not looking at the interest rate. We're not going to do math right now. We're going to work on progress and getting rid of this debt. And so how much, how much could you throw extra at the credit card debt if you're making minimum payments on the rest? Um, so that's the issue I have. After I'm done paying all of my bills, uh, each paycheck, I had $10 left the day I got paid. You make $83,000. Where's it going? All bills. So no, no. You told us that was your only debt. To... Stop. You told us this was well, your only debt. Uh, bills, like for house, you know, my rent. How much um, is your rent? Uh, $800 a month. That's not it. And then electric and stuff is 450 mm-hmm. Uh My son goes to a private school, so there that's $550 a month. Are you married? Um, I'm not. I'm a single mom. Okay. All right. So here, here um, the, the, the first thing is this. The... Grasping the idea that personal finance is 80% behavior, it's only 20% head knowledge. And so behaviors are what got you into this. New and healthy behaviors are what will get you out of this. Is that logical to you? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And so what you're going to do, we're going to put you into Financial Peace University and help you. That is a nine-week class, nine lessons, And we're going to teach you every detail about handling money. And I'm going to give it to you for free. It's usually about $100 to go through it, okay? I'm going to give it to you free because I've been where you are scared and didn't know what to do. And you're scared and you're by yourself trying to raise a kid and you don't know what to do. Isn't that right? Yes. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to use that fear not as a paralyzing agent, to paralyze you, but I want it to use you as the driving agent that says, I will never be here again. I will pay any price. I will sacrifice anything. I will do whatever it takes so that me and my kid are never on the doorstep of financial terror like this again. No matter what it takes, I'm getting out. No matter what it takes, no matter what Dave says I got to do, and my friends think it's weird and it's uncomfortable to me, I'm doing it anyway because I'm never going to be here again. Right. You got that? This is your halftime speech, yes. okay? It's halftime and you're behind. We got to get you to win the game. You can do this. I got to get there. (laughs) But you can't keep doing what you've been doing. So George is right. Are you going to cut up the credit cards? All of them. No exceptions as soon as you get off the phone. Say yes and mean it. Yes. Okay. I am. Good. I love it. Along with that, we're going to send you every dollar and the premium version. It'll connect to your bank. This is going to be your budgeting app. This is going to be your roadmap. This is going to tell you where you can and can't spend. It's it's your permission to play. And so once you set that up, along with watching the Financial Peace videos, it's going to give you a sense of control you've probably never had because you're paying attention to every single dollar that's coming in from that amazing $83,000 income, and we're going to put it to good use. And every expense that is not necessary for survival is going to go away for a short period of time. No lifestyle, no eating out, no vacations. We're cleaning this mess up because we're sick of living on the edge of terror the rest of our life. Right. You can eat out later. We stopped eating out. Yep, we stopped eating out. Yeah. Well, something's wrong with your budget, which something's wrong with your budget. Yeah. Because you're not, something's missing in what you're telling us, which makes me think you're not really doing a good detailed budget. I think this stuff is still happening to you, but I want to teach you to happen to it. So every dollar has an assignment before the month begins. You make $83,000 a year. Is our uh, stop your retirement temporarily? Do you have retirement coming out? I do. Stop it temporarily today. I want that money to go towards this debt. I want you to get where you, $10 is not okay left over. It's not. That's the definition of terror when you're by yourself. And you have to look in the eyes of your baby and you're scared. And, and, you know, you're just, you're, you're walking around with this 
300 pound weight around your neck. I want to get it off of you. And so, and I don't know what else is coming out of your check, but if you can stop it, stop it. Anything you can stop that not, not, not your health insurance, keep it. But oh my goodness. And any scorched earth, food, shelter, clothing, transportation, utilities. And other than that, kiddo, you're getting out of debt. Because if you didn't have a stinking payment in the world and you had a budget where you were making your money behave instead of wondering where it went, your life would be completely different than it is right now. And we haven't even moved you towards building wealth yet. Right. You're going there, though. Okay. Now, you promise me you'll do this stuff if I give it to you free? I promise. All right. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to call back and tell us how you're doing. I want you to call back if you get any questions, if you're scared, you feel like you're by yourself, you're not. We're here for you. Thank you. You can do this. But I got to tell you now, if you don't do it, I'm going to kick your butt, okay? <laughs> okay. Deal. We go to Dallas enough. Dave might find you out there. We'll be there for Smart Conference. You know what? I want to send Katie a ticket to Smart Conference as well. Can you do that, Austin? Yeah, yeah, Let's we're gonna do be that. there October twenty second. Maybe we can get to meet her. I would love that. That'd we'll be awesome. We'll arrange that. Yeah, and that'll give her some encouragement all day long in every area. That event will of her life. It'll yeah. light a fire under me. I mean, that yeah. event is just. Well, I take notes from every speaker on that. I, I love that thing. It's some of the best speakers and teachers in, in the world, and I, I sit in the audience and take notes every time we have one of those. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. The thing is, folks, you can do this stuff. It's hard though, but you got to be different than the world. Be not conformed to this world. You got to be weird. That's why we always yell at these people. These young couple paid off their house a while ago. You're dead free. You're weird. You guys are weirdos. People think I'm calling them names. I'm not calling them names. That's a huge compliment when it comes from us because normal sucks. Normal is broke and scared, making a lot of money and having no idea where it went. Normal is you work your whole life and you retire and social insecurity is supposed to take care of you. The government, which is well known for its ability to handle money, is your source. Come on. Come on. It's ridiculous. And this toxic money culture is a terrible measuring stick to look at your broke friends and go, well, I think I'm doing okay because I'm doing as good as my friends are. It's toxic culture, period. You can't look at the normal person's marriage and go, I want to be like that. No, because most of them don't have good marriage. They're not doing the right stuff. Most of them don't have good mental health. Most of them don't have good careers. You know, you don't want to be normal. God did not put you, know, you on this earth nor, to be you know, average. There's a normal. reason we look up to people that are winning in an area of their life. It's because they're winning. You know? It's because they're doing good stuff. They're making a decision to sacrifice. No discipline seems pleasant at the time. But it yields a harvest of righteousness. You can do this stuff, folks. And Katie can do it. And uh, we're going to love her so much that we're going to encourage her. And we're going to kick her butt. Both. Both what, are Whatever necessary. we got to do to get her to go get it done. And, and that's because we love her. We Whatever her it takes. Win. That's how it works, man. That's how it works. This is The Ramsey Show. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. of Ramsey Solutions. It's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. George Camel, Ramsey personality, host of the Fine Print and the Entree Leadership Podcast on Ramsey Network's is my co-host today. Open phones here at 888-825-5225. Zach starts off this hour in Evansville, Indiana. Hi, Zach. How are you? Hey, George and Dave. Hey, so, what's up? I'm a Catholic and I'm sorry, say, much, say again. Uh, so, that's all right. So I'm a Catholic. I've recently had a few conversations with other Catholics on the top of work. Some of them have an almost socialist perspective on it. They think workers today in the Western world are facing poor working conditions. They argue for a four-day work week, and they say their employers don't care about them. 
in some ways, I can understand their concern as Christians don't want others to be taken advantage of. However, I disagree with their position. Dave, I was wondering what you would say to these people as someone who is Christian, encourages hard work, long work when needed, and as someone who owns a business. Well, um, there's two sides to the equation. There's the employer side and the employee side. Um, I'm an employer, um, and a, as a person of faith, that means I have a responsibility to serve and treat my team well. Okay? Cool. Um, as a dad, I have a responsibility to nurture, serve, and take care of my children when they're minors in my home. Taking care of them also includes requiring that they brush their teeth, that they say yes, sir, and no, sir, that they say thank you and learn gratitude, that they learn to work. Loving them well, my children, when they were little, included teaching them to work, included teaching them things that if you were to ask them when I was requiring them to clean up their room and they were four, they could say, well, my dad has unfair working conditions. He's requiring too much of me at four years old. But the truth is I could have cleaned up their room easier than it was to talk them into doing it. But then they would have learned nothing and they would have gained no dignity. As an employer, it's different than parenting but uh, there are some parallels in that uh, my goal or my job as a person of faith is to serve my team. But serving my team also sometimes includes allowing them to work somewhere else because they suck at their job. We set them free in Jesus' name. I had a young man here that was in sales many years ago, and he, um, he was really bad at sales. And we kept talking to him about it. And finally, one of our leaders serving him sat down with him and said, you know, young man, you suck at this. What is it that you want to do with your life? He said, well, I really want to be a photographer. And we said, okay, well, let me help you show you how to be a photographer. We actually have a small business thing here called Entree Leadership. And we coached him and loved him and fired him because he was awful at sales. Oh, by the way, he's now a world-class photographer. Some of the album covers that you see um, from Nashville artists, the guy shot, but he sucked as a salesman. So that is, you know, what are unfair working conditions? That mean old Ramsey people fired me. Well, you sucked. And guess what? You went on to become the best possible version of yourself. And we were loving you well when we fired you. We actually cared about you when we were firing you. We actually cared about you when your mama had cancer and we paid for your airline ticket to go visit her. We actually cared about you when we do all these things to serve you and help you and love you. But we also actually require that while you're here at work, that you work. And I don't really want to hear about your whining and your social activism. I'll fire your little butt for that. So, you know, we're not going to unionize it, Ramsey. I can just promise you that. It's not going to happen. I'll just shut the dead gun place down. So, you know, here's the thing. You work, you get paid, you do the work, you get loved. We love each other. We're all working together to pull off the same thing. I don't know why a bunch of adults can't do this. I don't know why we have to juxtaposition employers against employees in order to call that some kind of spiritual movement. The goal, the truth is we're supposed to love each other. I'm supposed to love them well, and they're supposed to love us back and do their work. And um, it's not me extracting from the labor market uh, and not them uh, extracting from me in the name of some twisted form of fairness that they came up with and somehow put Jesus on that. That one's really ridiculous. But, you know, some people can put Jesus on anything and put Jesus on a peanut butter sandwich and call it theology. It's ridiculous, but it's not theology. It's a peanut butter sandwich. So um, 
That's a brand new sentence for me. Now. Right. Oh, gosh. But, but, yeah, I mean, so, yeah, no, I, I'm with you, Zach. I mean, you read your little statement. I disagree with your friends. It's not got anything to do with Catholicism versus Protestantism. Protest, pro, I can't even say it. Pro, Protestantism. It's got, it's got to do with a clean view of Scripture, which involves loving each other well. Do unto others as you have them do unto you. Treat your neighbor, as, love your neighbor as you love yourself. The second of the greatest commandments, Jesus said to Catholics and to Protestants equally. And so, you know, this idea that all employers are evil and should be punished and all form here, because for some of these little snowflakes, work at all is unfair. It's not fair that we have to work to live, Dave. It's unfair that you require me to work while I'm at work. And I want to work from home where I don't really work, but I'm at home and I still collect a check. And, oh, by the way, I've got three of those work-at-home jobs now, which means I'm now stealing officially from that employer, uh, which is a new trend in work-at-home, by the way. Go ahead and get three full-time jobs while you work at home. Get paid by all three of them for working full-time, and you obviously aren't. While you that's sit called, on your moral called, high horse. That's called stealing, okay? That's a lack of integrity, to say the least. You're a thief. So all of that to say, Zach, this idea that socialism or capitalism – is either one the answer? It's not. It's sanctified capitalism, meaning that people are loving the other person well in the equation. I actually do love our team, and I actually have done unbelievable sacrifices for them, and we proved that during our downtime during COVID as an example, where we said the first people that aren't going to get paid if somebody doesn't get paid is leadership. It didn't, it didn't result in that. We were able to keep profits up, and everybody was able to get paid. Yeah. But that was how we lined it out. We said the leaders go first. Uh, leaders go first. Leaders eat last, according to Simon Sinek, but leaders go first on, not, on taking the pain. And so you love your team well, and in return, if you are an employer, you should work your butt off. You should do your work as unto the Lord. 323 in the Bible. Okay, here we go. So, I mean, do your work as unto the Lord. Does that sound like do your work as unto the Lord? I want to work four days a week, and I want to not have to work, and I want to bitch and complain about my employer. Does that sound like doing your work as unto the Lord to me? Doesn't sound like it to me. personality is my co-host today open phones at 888-825-5225 so george and i are talking at the break about that last uh, caller and he's telling me stuff that i didn't know because i'm an old dinosaur apparently that you said there is a, a whole work uh, anti-work the, the rise movement. of the anti-work movement the group of people that think it is unfair that they should have to work and they're frustrated with the nature that. of their employment so therefore, because I hate my employer, I should just not have to work. The nature of employment. Okay. All right. And if and if the young man was asking me the Christian response to that, um, you know, uh, so here's what's interesting: the the Christian response is always loving, but sometimes is so bold and in your face when you read Scripture that it's offensive. So like. Uh, Paul said in the Bible, those, he was instructing, those that won't work, don't let them eat. Mm -hmm. So that would be a Christian response to the, what's it called? The anti-work anti -work movement. movement. Yes. There's a movement of people that don't think they should have to work, that they should just be given stuff by society. Yeah. Just because it's unfair and all working conditions, therefore, are unfair. Correct? Yeah. And there's, yeah. I mean, I just pulled up, there's about a litany of, of scripture that is very clear, even without the biblical context. You know, Ephesians, let the thief no longer steal, rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. 
Mm. Look at that. Our Proverbs. He, whoever is slack in his work is a brother to him who destroys. Mm. Mm. And I love, there's one that I always think of when I'm grilling. Um, and it's, uh, it's not, I can't remember the scripture. Ex- I can't quote it exactly. But it basically says, a, a, an unfaithful servant is like smoke to the eyes. Oh. You know, you get the smoke, smoke in your eyes, eyes and your eyes well. are watering. Yeah. yeah. And so when you have an employee that is an idiot, it's like the grilling and the smoke is in your face, you know? I mean, it's like that's what you're dealing with. And so if you've got an employer that's an idiot, it'd be a similar thing, I'm sure. But, oh, my gosh. This, this is, is a fun so, one compared to the, you know, talking about the anti-work movement. Proverbs fourteen twenty three: in all toil there is profit, but mere talk tends only to poverty. Sounds like there's a lot of talk out there, Dave. Well, the, the thing is, um, you kind of just have to back up and go, okay, if I was your dad and you were doing that and you were uh, under my control, I mean, if you were a teenager, in other words, you weren't li- an adult living on your own, then you get to do what you want when you do that, I guess. But, but if, I, if I was someone who loved you and could influence you because I loved you and I wanted what is good for you, then I've got to look at you and go, kind of have a Dr. Phil moment here. I mean, like, how's it working for you? How's that working? This not working thing. How's the not working thing working for you? You know? And, um, you know, because you kind of do that, like, with communism or socialism. You can go around the world in history and look and go, where there has been communism, where there has been socialism. You just look at them and go, so, you know, how's that working for you? Like, when you're driving through Israel, okay, uh, you, you go into the areas that are controlled by the Jewish community. They're prosperous, safe, clean. You go into the areas controlled by the PLO. Looks like a trailer park. It's awful. And you just kind of want to look at them and go, guys, how's that working for you? You know, how's that working for you? What's the fruit of your ideas? When you put your best idea forward and you get poop back, how's that working for you? You know, how's the thing, not work thing working for you? Yeah, man. Because you love somebody. I don't want you to, you know, how's the being in debt thing working for you? It's not. That's why you called us. We're going to get you out of debt, you know? So, yeah. And to your point, you talked about parents and how, you know, you make your kids clean their room and it's forced labor, whatever it is. The thing about Send work them is to the salt mines. you can't choose your parents, but you can choose your employer. So Ooh. imagine that. You can just choose to find a place that doesn't suck. I don't think they pay enough. Okay, don't go to work there. If you think you're worth I more, I think they're a toxic apply. work environment. That guy's a narcissist. Everybody's a narcissist now. Everybody that you don't like is yes. now a narcissist. It's that's, a, the, that's a redefinition of that term. Anybody I don't like, narcissist. That's how you define it. So, uh, yeah. I, and so, well, don't work there. Don't you have there. a choice. Don't work there. You don't. No one forced you to work there. Half the show is just telling America that you have agency over your life. You have control. But the problem is people back themselves into a corner and decide they only have one option. It's to work for a toxic place or not work at all. And that's just not the case. No, it's not, it's not the, the case. There's a lot of wonderful organizations that exist in capitalism and treat their people well, including their customers, and do a great job. Uh, are they perfect? No, they're not perfect institutions. They're run by human beings, and they're, but they're all over the place, and I know a bunch of them. And um, if you think you could do better, go start you a business and run it the right way. We need more of that in America. Go for it. Yeah, take that take that um, not working thing and go hire a bunch of people with it and see how that works out. And pay them with the not money that you don't make. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Great business model. <laughs> Love it. Uh, so, yeah, in those hungry people that need to be fed, yeah. um, you're not going to be feeding them because you ain't getting any money. Your generosity level because you're a broke person. By the way, all communists are broke people. Mm. They generally happen because there's nothing more capitalistic than a non-broke communist. Um, they all need. A, we all need to read uh, Rabbi Lapin's book. Thou yeah, shalt prosper. Thou shall prosper. Some great walk you this, gems yeah. in there, and it'll give you it'll give you a real spiritual look on work. Mm. The Jewish community. He talks. He's an Orthodox Jewish rabbi. He talks about the Jewish community. The work. The Hebrew word for work and the word for worship is very similar. He said on Sunday we have worship service and on Monday we have customer service, mm. and they're both worship. They're both work ship. So when you are working and doing your work as unto the Lord, it is honoring. It's an honoring thing spiritually. You're honoring God with that. 
So uh, you're to sit on your butt and scream about everyone else and gripe about everyone else. Uh, there is nothing Christian about that at all. I think that's called gossip. Mm. So anyway, it's a very interesting discussion. It's a fun life mission, I guess, to be angry at work and just strike. I you know, don't know, it's not fun because they're angry all the time. Being angry all the time is not fun. Well, that's why Reddit exists, Dave. That's where they all go. <laughs> Twitter, Twitter and Reddit. Twitter not, and Reddit. Um, well, at least you have a place to vent and, and someone can pretend to care. But, and it's um, free. So that's yeah. nice. They but don't have the, to pay the, for it. But, you know, the whole thing of I'm going to – that's why, I, you know, I've, had, I've turned off Twitter. I don't, watch, I don't look at it anymore because it, there's nothing on there but anger. Hmm. And I, don't, I quit watching the news. I don't, I don't turn on the news anymore. I just um, if you're people, not on Twitter, you don't have to block people. So that, that's I know that's the downside. You had some fun with that. That's the downside. I had the record for most blocks. A guy reached out and DM me and said, "Hey, why did Dave block me?" As if I I well, have the reason. You're one of forty thousand, dude. I mean, Get something line, you man. said was pretty offensive. So you're not special. You're not that special. But yeah, you know, please uh. unblock me. I'm, I don't. I'm not even on there anymore. Just just forget it. Go on to something that's relevant to your life. And Twitter is not on the list. That's so, right. yeah, it's, it's this is an interesting discussion, though. Yeah. We're babbling a little bit because there's a lot of emotion around it. I just did not know there was a, a real it's thing. A re I mean, that's from the BBC. They did a huge piece on there's it. There's a real thing called the anti-work movement. That's like the, man, you could have an anti-anything movement. That's right. That's pretty cool. But I think everyone needs to read Ken's book from Paycheck to Purpose if they're, you know, in this world. Because what we're saying is work is not evil. Work is actually good for us, and we just need to find the right kind of work at the right place. Let me just tell you, that there is nothing – the human psyche is built to have traction. There is no psychological benefit to doing something that has no traction. Work involves traction. That's why I like pressure washing. You get to see the stuff clean up while you're doing it. That's why people like to mow grass. You get to see when you're done. You got to do it again next week, but you get to see when you're done, Right. It's, it's, you know, when you're doing something, you need to be, feel the sense of accomplishment and traction, incremental progress along the way. It's a psychological need that the human brain has. And to actually do nothing is psychologically suicide because your, your brain is going to rot inside your head. So that, that's, it really doesn't work on so many levels, psychologically, economically, spiritually, and that's why your loving Heavenly Father gives you instructions to work. Hmm. There we go. Good word. There's the your Sunday sermon. The anti-work movement is not biblical. There we go. Ding, ding. That's a headline, Dave. Be careful. This is The Ramsey Show. George Camel, Ramsey personality, is my co-host in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions. James and Ash Lara are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Hey, hey Mr. Ramsey. Welcome. Where do you guys live? Uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Oh, it's a great town. Welcome yes. to Nashville. Yes, sir. Thank you. And how you. much debt have you guys paid off? $397,218.20. Boom. Wow. How long did this take? 36, 36 months. months. 36 months? You were rocking that. Yes, what was your sir. range of income during that time? 80000 to 250 Oh, there's a little jump in three years. Just a <laughs> tiny bit. So yes, what in sir. the world happened with your jobs to start with? Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, so in the middle of it, you get started, and then I got laid off. And so we only had his income for about three months. Um, and then I got another job, and then I got a better job. And, you know, somewhere in the middle, God shows up after you've been faithful. And I got three bonuses in one year. And so wow. we just took them all and went towards debt. Ding, ding, wow. ding. What do you yeah. do? 
I'm an accountant. Okay, and what do you do? Uh, I'm a firefighter paramedic. Okay, cool. Yeah. So you're stayed stable, and she went to nothing and then went straight up. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Okay. Absolutely. Wow. That's incredible. All right, so you didn't make enough even with all of that hardly to pay that much off. You must have sold something. Yes, sir. We sold several things. Anything and everything we could, <laughs> like you said, we sold. What did you sell? What was the biggest thing you sold? A motorcycle and a car that we got rid of. Okay, well, how much did they go for? Um, the motorcycle was right at thirty-two thousand. Wow! Ooh, yeah, nice bike. We just, yeah, it was. It was. It was <laughs> what great. What kind of bike was that? <laughs> a, a dumb decision is what kind of bike. No, that was. it sounds like an awesome bike. What was it? it uh, now it was an Indian. Yeah, it was an yeah. Indian. Oh, it was. Yeah. It was it, so fun. It but was a great bike, but thirty-two thousand dollars worth of motorcycle. Yes, sir. That's yeah. a sweet bike, though. It I was, bet you cried a little. Uh, I did a little bit, but looking back, it was absolutely a dumb decision and then the best decision. Yeah, it was do. a very mature thing, but there's still the little boy inside goes. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. <laughs> okay, so 100%. all right, so the Indian's gone, and what was the car? It was a Chevy Cruze that we got rid of. Yeah. 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 What did that sell for? Mm, uh, right at twenty-two thousand. Okay, so yeah. fifty-four thousand dollars. Of this was those two things. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. All right. What well, you guys obviously just did a complete about face. I mean, you like you changed everything. Yes. This sir. was very radical. I can see it in the numbers. Yes, sir. So tell me what caused this radical transformation and how you got connected to us. Well, I guess we just like you've said, we got tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired, and then we were just stupid on steroids, as Dave says. <laughs> And you just wake up and you're tired of living like that. You're tired of living the norm. You're tired of being like everyone else. And you just make that decision that this is going to change. Uh, we did get married in 19, 2019. And we knew going in that we were bringing debt. And we were completely honest with each other. But we also, in talking to each other, were like, we're not living like this anymore. Um, I'm sure we had heard through, I do believe a church is where we had originally heard you from. Mm-hmm. Kind of played around with it when we first met. But then when we got married, we made the commitment that we were going to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, so how did you get to our materials at that point? What did you do? Did you go through FPU or read the book or what? We read the, book, read the book and then yeah. we just watched thousands and thousands of hours, seriously, of, of YouTube videos and everything we could. And that's kind of what brought us here today. It was hearing everyone else's dead scream that we wanted to do that. Yeah. yeah. And we got to this point, even during those difficult months, when I, and I say difficult, when all you're doing is eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. That yeah. sounds crazy, mm-hmm. yeah. but we wouldn't go to the grocery store because we had peanut butter and jelly and bread. Yeah. And it, it, that's how serious we were about doing it. And then we would just sit and watch videos together of, of you and guys on TV, people, other people talking, other people sharing their experiences. Um, and that's what got us through. Yeah. Yeah. There's wow. several thousand debt free screams yeah. on YouTube. Oh yes. yeah. On our YouTube channel, several thousand. And they're we've now had, we've now had a billion downloads on youtube yeah. it's crazy yeah so well you were our cheerleader like we didn't have a cheerleader so yeah. you were the encouragement we would listen to debt free screens well, and all go. those people like you too yeah. were your exactly. encouragement wow because yeah. you see yourself in every one of those calls 100, a little bit 100 percent. but your old thing was you really had a beautiful thing because you get married so you got a fresh start on life yes and you're like okay while we're at it we're gonna clean out the garage 100 yep. percent so you know, yeah. while we're at it, the end in and the cruise is gone, right? right. Exactly. Wow. And, and behavior that we had prior going into just living like everyone else was going to end. Um, and I say in the middle of that, we had just gotten married and there were those difficult times where all we were talking about was this. And I, I it was just, that's when we had to go back to the YouTube videos because it got very discouraging that we almost lost each other during this. We were uh-huh. so determined doing the finance part of it. Uh-huh. But now coming out on forgot the forgot to have a honeymoon. Yeah. Right. We forgot to do us. Yeah. yeah. And we forgot it, but because we were so focused and so intent on doing this and wanted to change, because we, we had between us we have eight kids. We have four apiece. So mm-hmm. we not only this, we now have eight kids that they're excited that we're here. They're following yeah. these steps. We have wow. we have twenty one year olds that are both, both bought houses. houses. Both have a 401k. Um, wow. Both, yeah. yeah. They're, so it's not. We showed them how to win. Yeah. Oh, and we it. just, yeah. yeah thank the you so much. The ripple effect of what you guys have done. I mean, it will be felt for generations. Yes. Yeah. And that That's was the incredible. biggest thing. We were wanted to make a generational change starting right now. Wow. Yeah. So did I miss it? What kind of debt was the 397? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't ask. Besides Stu- stupid? <laughs> besides, besides the car and the motorcycle. Go ahead. Go ahead. So we had medical debt. We had IRS debt. We had, you know, state taxes debt. We had attorney fees from before we got married. Credit um, card debt, had, student yeah, loan debt. Yeah, we had debt. 13 credit cards. 
I was still paying on my student loans from oh. 10 years ago. <laughs> How do you, you even you keep you up you with all these payments? You feel like you lost 300 well, pounds. Yes, that's sir. the thing. Is <laughs> it's a full-time job. Would pay something and somebody would come out of the woodwork and say, "You oh, by the way, you owe us too. So you just tack it on to the end. <laughs> yeah, it was. it's great to see that number. But then when you get there, you're like, oh, my God, what? how was I living? Yeah. You're excited about the number being gone, but then you're like, oh my God, I did that. It's great that it's gone. It's, it's a tremendous, you, you talk about this all the time, Mr. Ramsey, it's a tremendous feeling that mm-hmm. is off your shoulders right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You breathe differently at you, night. You you're absolutely not. do. Yeah. And in reverse of that, or the other side of that, we almost lost each other, but now we're, we've grown so much closer together doing this. Um, now it's, it's totally changed our, our, very young marriage just in the past couple mm. of years. It's really changed our marriage going forward. You guys are amazing. You created margin in your money, but also in your time and in your mm-hmm. life and in your yes. marriage so you can actually focus instead of being stressed and distracted. Amen. Yeah. That's exactly incredible. Right. You yeah. guys are heroes. I mean, you got, you gained back many hours a month just not having to pay these bills. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of them. Yes, oh, my sir. God. Everybody on the list. Oh, my gosh. Yes, sir. The it, IRS, the attorneys, the credit cards, it was all there. Get in line. It was. And it was, you know, many nights of working double shifts. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Her work and doing taxes for other people. It was, yeah, we, we spent a lot of time away from each other working because we were absolutely going to do this. And then. Was it worth it? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Because yeah. you, you still have life in the middle of that. We yeah. still lost her mom. We still had another mm-hmm. death in the family. You still mm-hmm. have kids graduating, kids going into Marines, kids, mm-hmm. just everything. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, we, we were determined, Mr. Ramsey, we were going to push this and get here. You guys are warriors. 400 uh-huh. grand paid off. Yes, That's sir. That's an incredible accomplishment. It is. Yeah. In three years. It's just Ooh. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, we've, we've gone from baby step one, everybody listening, baby step one to right now standing there. We uh, are making double payments on the house now. So anybody, Woo. everybody should hopefully will know that. Yeah, we are at that point right yeah. now in 40 months. We're ready to work four, five, six now. Yeah. 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 Are, are, are working. We are yeah. doing it. Yes, sir. Way to go. Very well done. We got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. That is the next chapter in your story for sure. How ordinary people build extraordinary wealth and how you can too. That's where you're going. Proud of y'all. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank y'all you. are neat people. Thank you. It was Thank fun you. to talk to you. Yes, sir. And we got a copy. Or we got Financial Peace University, which you should have gone through <laughs> anyway. But now we're going to give it to you free, and you can go through it. So there you go. Keep you motivated along <laughs> the journey. Got the new joy. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it'll take you on to the baby steps. Take you on to the baby steps millionaire status. And George and uh, Dr. John Deloney and George Campbell and Rachel Cruz are in the new videos along with me. And also a Total Money Makeover book uh, for you to get going and may already give away to somebody who's trying to get going. You guys are very, very impressive. James and Ash Lara from Charleston, South Carolina, $397,000 paid off in 36 months. 80 to 250 income. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're, We're debt-free. Debt yeah. <laughs> the newlyweds. Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. That's one way to start off your marriage. Let's pay off 400 grand. First thing out of the gate. First 40 months. Yeah. This is the Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, Galatians 6, 9, and let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Pablo Picasso said, only put off until tomorrow what you're willing to die having left undone. Woo, pretty strong on a little bit of... Deep and dark from Pablo there. Yeah, Pablo stepping, stepping up with a positive thinking moment. But yeah, oh my gosh. Hey, right now, if you're hearing a lot of the talking heads in the news stirring up fear about the real estate market, be careful. Don't believe them. It's not going to crash. Um, it's going to slow down. The economy has, slow, has slowed down. But uh, don't make decisions based on fear. Make them based on facts. And uh, prices aren't going down. Values aren't going down. Some of the prices are going down because they were unrealistically high, but the values are not dropping. 
So we're just going to grow, and we're going to grow at a slower work rate. It's going to take a little harder, a little longer to sell a house than 48 hours, and uh, probably more like 70 or 120 days, right? You need an experienced real estate agent when you're selling houses in a market like this. You need an experienced real estate agent when you're buying houses in a market like this. If you want to find who we trust that's a high-octane, high-protein real estate agent, Ramsey Trusted, go to RamseySolutions.com slash agent. Check out our endorsed local providers. Lee's in Phoenix. Hi, Lee. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you very much. What's up? How can we help? Well, I received an insurance settlement check of $174,000, and I know I'm going to make a donation to my church, but after that, I need some advice on how to spend the rest of it or save it or whatever I need to do. Okay, cool. So, um, well, we would have, we teach the shortest distance between where you are and wealthy is a process that we call the baby steps. Yes. So do you have any debt currently? Um, I have a $15,000 loan on my car, but I don't have any credit card debt, and I do owe 136 on my mortgage. Okay. And what's your income? Uh, 60000 a year. Okay. And what was the settlement from? It was from an, uh, an accident. Are you okay? I had it back in 2020. Oh, thank the good Lord, yes. Okay. There's no ongoing you. medical issues okay. or health bills you're dealing with? Well, um, I'm still waiting on, on a pending $25,000 that they're holding, but uh, I don't think I'm going to owe anything else um, uh, on this accident. I think they've taken care of everything so far. Okay. And um, I do have, you know, I'm not doing therapy now, but I, I am fine. Okay. But I am 84 years old, so okay. I'm not a young chicken. <laughs> How much you do don't you have? sound like it. Yeah, that you surprised right. me when you said that. Wow. <laughs> well, most people don't think I'm that okay. age. What do you am, do? You have do you have money in uh, other money in savings? I have uh, f- about fifty five thousand in a four hundred one k and some money market. Prior to the but, accident um, and since the accident, before you received this check, how are you living? I was living an excellent life, traveling and doing all kinds of things. Um, what are you it, using it for income? Me down. I have uh, pensions, two pensions, and a social security, and that's what I live on. I don't. Live how on much is that? Else. All of that total up to a month. Uh, $5,000. Excellent. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, if you were my mom, here's what I would tell you to do. I'm 62, okay. so that's a that's mm-hmm. a mathematical possibility, okay? Um, so right. here's what I would tell you to do. I would tell you to pay okay. off your house and your car. Okay. Now, that's if you I did thought. that, if you did sure. that, the $5,000 <laughs> goes a lot further every month, doesn't it? Oh, Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Now, if you have zero debt in the whole world, I want you to breathe that in and feel that. How's that feel? <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. And uh, that's kind of why I'm having you do it. I mean, there's okay. not a big financial okay. thing. At 84, if you said, I'm going to take all this money and blow it and pay my mortgage out of my uh, deal, it doesn't ruin your life. You're living your life well already. Okay. Okay. And and we're not really doing this for the next 25 years, because that's probably statistically not likely, right? Right. Well, my grandmother lived to be 105, so I'm... I'm you might have 20. You might have 20, but not 25. <laughs> that's why I said 25. I know, okay. I know. But the... Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> but the She's you're, like, you're fun. Challenge me, Dave. You're I'll do fun. it. You're fun. You're fun. You're going to push it all the way out to the edge on my math here. But the point <laughs> being that what gives you the best quality of life is what ran through my head if I'm in your shoes for the next decade and you've enjoyed really living life well on $5,000 worth of pensions to Social Security a month. If we take your payments out of that and the weight that those payments have on your shoulders, on your back, and on your neck, if you, if you don't have there, – there's, there's literally a physical transaction that occurs when you're no longer in debt. Right. You really do well, feel like my, you're breathing cool mountain air. Yes. Well, that's what my thought was because I know that I don't need the money that's in my 401k. And if I have 
money every month that I'm not putting out in other things. I can save that or I can travel or I can do different things that I would enjoy. You've got and options. I'm going, I want to do that as long as I can do that. I love it. Yeah. I, I, I hope I'm like 130, Lee when I grow up. 136 and 15 is 151 out of 174. Correct. And you're debt free. And you can still make that donation to the yeah. church. How cool is that? And you can still book a couple more trips. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, as I said, too, there is another 25000 pending, which I, the attorney assured me that I probably will get. And there's also possibilities of some other that they're working on. But I, I'm, I'm not banking on any of that. I'm banking on just what I have. So was it a car accident? Sounds like a plan. Actually, uh, I was a pedestrian walking when I was hit. Oh, wow. So, by the grace of God, I'm still here. Well, you're resilient. That's impressive. Yeah. Well, I figured the Lord wasn't done with me yet. Mm -mm. Apparently. Apparently. Yeah, he gets to decide that after all, huh? So how long ago was the accident? Um, October of 2020. Oh, my goodness. In the middle of all that garbage. Mm. I mean, how did you get hit by a car? Nobody was driving. So... (laughs) <laughs> no cars out there. Golly. Wow. Wow, you're amazingly. Well, that's what I would do. Uh, the sense of peace, the sense of well-being, the weight that has been set down w- is what I would want for you. It's what I'd want for yeah. me if I were in your shoes. Well, and when anyone retires, I mean, going into retirement with no payments in the world, it changes how you make decisions in retirement. It changes what you can do. It changes if you can take the grandkids to Disney that year. Now, she's figured out a way to do all that on the 5,000, really. Yeah. But the thing is, there's something almost in the air. It's just intangible. It is spiritual. It is psychological um, at this stage. It's not financial. It's not even mathematical at this stage uh, because of the number of years we're dealing with. Mm. Um, in, in the equation, you know, the math starts not being relevant in this situation. But there is something precious about the feeling that when you get up in the morning and you're sitting on your porch and you're 84 and it's yours. Mm. That just is golden, man. I, I, and I Can't want really that. Quantify I, it. I, 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 you know, I want that. I had that when I was in my, you know, my thirties because I quit borrowing money and paid off everything. Right. But a lot of people don't, you had that, mm-hmm. you know, in your thirties. Yeah. But I, you know, and with all she's been through too, yeah. she needs to enjoy that and she's an upbeat, optimistic, incredible lady, you know, but having gone through that horrible accident, obviously. Yeah. And she doesn't need the money to put food on the table. So that's kind of right. what we were trying to get yeah. at is how much does she yeah. need this settlement money to yeah. live? And she doesn't. If she had a it, no pension and was trying to live on Social Security, I might change that. But she's got everything set up. This is like extra money in a sense. It's not like she's overdone. Like she's got a yeah. ton of money. But it's just um, so really what we're getting here is a quality of life issue. Yeah. kind of thing oh, it's so, Which, such a I don't good, know if you can quantify it but will she live longer without a mortgage payment I don't know I think there's a case to be made for that I doubt you could probably back it up with empirical research that's ever been done because I've never seen that but um, yeah you know stress is uh, the big one of the big, hypertension kills people mm-hmm. you know so she doesn't sound too stressed to me though nope. <laughs> that puts us out of the ramsey show in the books we'll be back with you before you know it in the meantime remember there's ultimately only one way to financial peace and that's to walk daily with the prince of peace christ jesus do you love a good dave rant Want to see the latest Ramsey Show videos going viral? Check out your favorite moments from The Ramsey Show on YouTube. Go watch and subscribe to The Ramsey Show channel on YouTube.